To be good at competitive Pokemon, you need to be observant of a million different things, of course. But here, we're specifically referring to observing common trends in the metagame and the teams that are being used, what traits they share, and why they might share those traits, so that perhaps one can gain an advantage over them if they're ever over-relied on. One of the most common traits nearly all teams share is the presence of a ground type. This is no accident. Many top players hold the belief that a ground type is almost required to make a good team. This isn't a rule carved in stone, but it's a strong principle across multiple generations because the inclusion of a ground type just about always improves a team by virtue of ground types many incredible traits we'll be discussing in this video, and the fact that many ground types are among the best Pokemon in the game. As such, players aiming to make and use consistent teams capable of taking on many Pokemon as possible find themselves gravitating towards ground types with regularity. Obviously, there are successful teams without ground types, but they're generally the exception. It's often not even a conscious attempt to include a ground type on one's team. They're just such natural fits. Today, we will interrogate the concept we have internalized to the point of second nature. So why do we quote unquote need a ground type on every team? Now, if you guys do enjoy this video, please let me know by leaving a like. And also, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'm on my way to 300k, that's my end of year goal. And if you do like this video and want to sub, you can help me get there. The ground type has several excellent defensive uses. A resistance to stealth rock and immunity to sandstorm stand out in particular, which gives them a steel type-esque quality as ranking among the game's most resilient Pokemon just based on typing. However, ground's most defining trait that steel envies its immunity to electric which is one of the best offensive types in the game. This means different things in different generations. But by and large, ever since Generation 5, the primary practical purpose of this trait is an immunity to one of the best, most disruptive moves in the game, Volt Switch. Even if the ground type doesn't exactly want to switch into and counter the Volt Switch user, most famously the case against Rotom Wash and its Stab Hydro Pump, the mere presence of a ground type on one's team can help in deterring completely free Volt Switch spam, to say nothing of actually blocking it, risky though that play might be. Incidentally, this is one of Gastron and Seismitoad's greatest traits, being a Volt Switch immunity that is completely unafraid of both Rotom Wash's Hydro Pump and the Hidden Power Ice or Ice Beam in the case of Gen 7's Assault Vest Magirna that most other Volt Switch users carry. Theoretically, a Volt Absorb Pokemon can also fit the role. This is most notably and commonly the case on Generation 5 Rain teams which utilize Thunderous Therian. However, given the massively limited pool of viable Volt Absorbers, this is quite rare. In generations before 5, Volt Switch didn't exist, yet ground type's defensive functions were similarly crucial. This is most notable in Generation 3, in which Dragonance Tyranitar and Choice Ben Aerodactyl were two of the most dangerous threats. Their fast, powerful rock slides were merciless and required sturdy counters. If you've ever seen Gen 3 OU, you know that Swampert is everywhere and is in large part thanks to Dragonance Tyranitar and Aerodactyl. Sure, fighting in steel can also resist the rock, but those Pokemon are not nearly as reliable as counters. The fighting type is populated by frail Pokemon who don't heal in Sandstorm, while Steels can work but need existence due to their Earthquake weaknesses, something Ground doesn't have. Generation 2 or Gold Silver Crystal has a similar emphasis on the presence of Ground types, though there it is primarily as a method of slowing down the monstrously dangerous legendary Electrics, Zapdos and Raikou, whose Thunder is incredibly spammable otherwise. Even thudding into resist can be damaging because of Thunder's high paralysis rate. As such, the vast majority of teams enjoy having something that can help pivot around Thunder's paralysis and chip damage. Though options are far more limited in the first generation, Red Blue Yellow famously has its own version of this, the Zapdos vs. Rhydon Dynamic. DPP or Generation 4 is the generation that emphasized the necessity of the ground type least, but even in this generation, grounds are incredibly prominent. After all, they are among the best Pokemon at handling metagame staples like Heatran and Jirachi. Plus, whenever the metagame gets too comfortable not running ground types, Choice Spec Zapdos shows up and reminds them why that's a really bad idea. It rains down monstrous thunderbolts that cleave through nearly everything else. In newer generations, the massive power of Choice Specs Tapu Koko and even Regieleki have a similar effect. Though generational metagame specifics mostly dictate the generality of corresponding ground type values, there is one major cross-general benefit to the ground typing, and that is an immunity to another one of the most irritating moves in the game. Thunder Wave. Even slow Pokemon that theoretically don't mind Thunder Wave as much still don't like being paralyzed. That 25% full paralysis chance is absolutely killer, especially in close games where every turn is crucial. 
To be able to thwart that entirely, or even just help draw other attacks for teammates to pivot in on, like against Volt Switch or Gold Silver Crystal's Thunder users, is a massive boon for any team to have. Being able to fend off the likes of Discharge Zapdos is similarly valuable. Thus far, we have discussed the ground type's many excellent defensive qualities, mostly fending off all things electric, but they are far from simply being walls. They would not be as excellent and splashable as they are if that were the case. No, ground types are among the game's most offensively potent Pokemon as well. This stems from one of the most tried and true moves in Pokemon history, right from Generation 1, Stab Earthquake. Only flying and grass types take it comfortably, and later on, Air Balloon and Levitate Pokemon as well, unless Extra Drill's Mode Breaker was involved in the case of Ladder. In fact, one of the reasons flying types are so popular as they are is because they are among the few reliable ways of handling Earthquake spam, especially since they are unaffected by the spikes that make such great pairings with Earthquake users, as they help overwhelm grass types and bulkier neutral Pokemon. Plus, flying types aren't exactly ironclad against grounds either. Any offensive ground type worth its salt has a notable tool to hit them hard, super effectively or otherwise. Most famously, the combination of Earthquake and a Rock or Ice move have impeccable neutral coverage, which reliably brings many flyers down to Earth. Another offensive ground that's famously difficult to handle, Mammal Swine, has super effective Ice Stab for this purpose. Even neutral attacks like Garchomp's Dragon Stab, Excadrill's Iron Head, and Gliscor's Facades are effective at cutting many ground immunities down. These specific examples of Pokemon bring us to our final points. Despite all the excellent innate traits ground types have, among the reasons they are so splashable is because they have excellent Pokemon. One could argue that it goes both ways, since a big part of why these Pokemon are so excellent is their ground typing. And while that certainly isn't wrong, it's not fully right either. The reason it's so easy to slot a ground type on a team is because ever since Generation 1, Red, Blue, and Yellow, ground types have had absolutely tremendous combination of stats and move pools. And that's before they got the abilities that made several of their famous members so good. It helps that ground goes incredibly well with most other types, canceling out many weaknesses, most notably Stealth Rock, while having more useful resistances added. Every generation of OU has had a ground type, often several as the Pokedex expanded, among its very best Pokemon. To name but a few, RBY's Rhydon, Gold Silver Crystal's Golem and Nidoking, Advance's Swampert and Claydol and Flygon, DPPs had pout on and Nidoqueen, as well as Swamper and Flygon again, and then the ground types that have been good across the generations. Quagsire, Garchomp, Gliscor, Gastrodon, Excadrill, and of course, Big Bad Landers T. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many others like Mamoswine, Rhyperior, and Seismitoad. We haven't even mentioned Dugtrio because it's such a unique Pokemon that deserves its own video. Ground's dominance is not just an OU thing either. Look at Groudon and Ubers, or Pokemon like Torterra in lower tiers. You can even take Sword and Shield NU as an example, where Mudsdale and Silvali Ground are considered S rank. All in all, I hope you now understand just why the ground type has been dominant to the point of just about being required. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by leaving a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and if you want to check out my previous discussion videos, as I try to do about three or four of these a month, I have a playlist down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.